Okay, good afternoon everyone. We're going to kick off the presentation uh, with myself, Stuart Little at IRT Surveys and Andrew Eagles will be joining us in a few seconds uh, from Sustainable Homes uh, just to talk through eco funding and solid wall houses and how you can assess where you are, benchmark uh, your housing stock and what's the right way forward, how can you leverage these uh, funds that are out there properly. So without further ado, I'm going to crack on and show you some slides. As, as If you think this is strange sitting in your office uh, listening to this disembodied Scottish voice, believe me, it is even weirder to be pacing around a boardroom with the headphones on talking to um, 112 people who, who you can't look in the eye. So it's a very strange experience from this end as well. Uh, but hopefully we'll, we'll press on and you can see the screens and it should all make perfect sense. Now I don't know, you could be sitting on your own, you could be sitting in a boardroom with 10 people watching, uh, but at the end if you send us an email and request a CPD certificate, we will send that to yourself and your colleagues who are in attendance. So let's click on and show you what we do. IRT are all about infrared thermographic surveys and what we've been doing for the last 11 and a half years is photographing buildings and highlighting defects. In about 20, 2007, we wrote a piece of software that could actually quantify the pictures and turn the pixels into pounds. And since then, what we've been doing is photographing building stock and issuing people with spreadsheets to say, look, here, here is where you are today, uh, and helping them actually access grants to go ahead and bring people out of fuel poverty uh, and help save energy, both on a, on a commercial and a domestic level. Normally for housing associations and local authorities, it's not particularly a, a one-off type thing that the IRT offer. So the problem in the market is that the built environment is here. Um, Philip Selwood at the Energy Saving Trust put out a statement a long time ago that said 80% of the buildings we'll be living and working in in 2050 are already here. So the built environment it is responsible for about 40% of the world's CO2 emissions and it's a very real problem, it's here. One of the other key problems is that no one has really accurately benchmarked where we are today, uh, be that schools, be it uh, commercial buildings or universities, colleges, hospitals uh, or indeed housing stock and that's one of the things hopefully at the end of today you, you'll have a clearer idea of how to achieve that. We all know legislation uh, is moving, it's a bit of a moving feast, uh, they keep changing things like Last year it was CERT and CESP, which was the Community Energy Saving Programme and the Carbon Emission Reduction Targets. They also introduced um, CRC for commercial buildings a while ago. And I think it's fair to say the market is fairly clunky and it's very, very confusing. If you're a homeowner or a housing stock manager, it's very difficult to know where to turn, uh, who to turn to, who to trust, and what funding is actually out there. There are things like Cisco, Ciro, um, new to most people, Eco. What is Eco funding? Who qualifies for it? And how the heck do you get it? And if you choose one, how do you know which one is giving you the best value for money? That's what VFM means on the, the sixth bullet point, by the way. And finally, at the end of the process, if you go away and you spend tens of millions of pounds improving your stock, how do you know it's been done properly? Who's policing it? There have been numerous instances of Ofgem uh, rejecting houses, saying that these haven't been done properly. I think they rejected something like 21,000 cavity fill jobs uh, just this week uh, that people had actually claimed the carbon on and they hadn't been done properly. There was no correct audit trail. So that, that's one of the things that IRT offer. We offer benchmarking to help you find out where you are today. We offer a bit of road mapping to f help you uh, find a way forward. We can now also bring funding to the project as well, uh, which is a little bit unique. And then we can survey your buildings again at the end and prove the whole uh, audit trail for you. So what you can see in this slide uh, is a very, very simple uh, two houses, semi-detached homes, uh, as a before and after. The house on the left has full cavities and double glazing. The house on the right has no uh, insulation in the cavities and single glazing. You can see right down in between the two images, you've got a, a downpipe 
and you can actually see some of the grey and white area spilling over into the red and yellow house. Uh, apologies if you're if you're colour blind, this might be a, a difficult presentation for you. Um, but what you're seeing in grey there is actually insulation spilling over from one house to the other. So the house on the right is actually benefiting a little bit from his neighbour's uh, spend, which is great. Let's all <laughs> encourage our neighbours to insulate their homes. So this is basically the IRT solution, is let, let us come in and benchmark the stock at the start. We can highlight all the defects, um, then give you a, what we've called a carbon diet plan that says here's where you can save money and how you can save money. And then an after image at the end that, that just proves efficacy of the whole thing. I think we've just got Andrew joining us. Andrew, you online? No, not there yet. Um, I'll just press Thank on with the, the IRT slides for the time being, folks, until Andrew joins us. I hope you understood me okay, and uh, please feel free to phone me directly. Uh, might do well. his slides for him. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Okay, we also have uh, a tool called the Carbon Dashboard, which you can access. It's very simple. It's just irtcarbondash.co.uk. That is essentially an interactive front end that allows you to play with your building stock. So what you can see are three speedometers and login details at the top right. If we've created a dashboard for one of your homes or 10,000 of your homes, they're all stored in our servers online in Edinburgh. So you dial in, you type in your password and your username, and then you can interact with your stock and say, that, let me simulate 3,000 semi-detached bungalows that are three bed, uh, off gas, solid wall, wh whatever the, the criteria happens to be you'd like to, to simulate. You can then very simply move a little red slider. Uh, if you look toward the bottom of the screen, you can see six sliders that say wall, U-value, roof, window, heating, draft proofing, and lighting. What you can do there is simply move one, move a slider, click calculate, and it will show you savings in terms of energy, CO2, and monetary savings uh, straight away. It takes about 0.7 of a second to do an individual house. It takes about five to seven minutes to do a, a hospital. Uh, it's running SAP at its core, or SBEM on commercial buildings, and it's also running uh, the American system, Energy Plus, which we find, to be honest, the, the most accurate system. Now, the dashboard, you'll notice there's an EPC rating on there as well. That is also a dynamic EPC. So if you do something to the building, if it has an impact on the actual EPC rating, you'll notice that D change to uh, a B or a C or a D or whatever. There's also a function in there called the carbon diet plan and what that allows you to do is switch on the diet plan and you're then faced with a few options. You can uh, you can say look show me let me play with the EPC rating for instance. So if your homes currently have a G you can pick up that G, move it to a D and click calculate diet plan which is a button that appears in the bottom right. Once that diet plan has been uh, pushed basically, it'll do thousands of SAP calculations and come back and say okay here is the route to achieve that. If you do the walls first, then you do the boiler, then you do the roof. Here's how quickly you can get to that rating. Also in the diet plan function you'll notice things like you can say I would like to save 10% of my energy bill or reduce my CO2 output by 5% or 10 or 15, whatever your actual targets are. So you simply put in the number you'd like to save and again it will go away and do all those calculations for you and very very quickly produce a diet plan that says this is where you are today, this is what you need to do and you should achieve your goals. Uh, we have actually done over 240,000 homes with this system, we've done about 38 hospitals, we've done over 100 uh, university buildings, we've done about 100 odd schools with it. And every time we do it, we are normally within about three to four percent of full bore, fifty thousand pound investment grade energy audits. It's a really accurate tool, uh, and it's nice and visual. And you have visual photographs to back it up. So I'll give you a quick example of a case study. We did twenty five thousand homes for Aberdeen City Council, and we did it in three phases. We did ten thousand homes uh, back in two thousand and six before we could quantify them. And what happened was when people, Aberdeen 
Council they knocked on the doors of 10,000 people, showed them a full colour infrared image and said, we would like to give you free insulation. Which is quite strange, because people then said, I don't care, I don't want it, I don't want any, I don't want any holes drilled in my home, I don't want anything for free, please go away. And by the way, I don't understand the image, I don't understand what all these colours are. Which is really strange. In phase two, what we did was exactly the same, but we gave the, the local authority 10,000 images that were black and white with energy loss in one solid colour, just bright red. This time the experience was different. People understood the images, they got it, they could see the big red blobs, but the reaction was the same. They shrugged their shoulders and said, so what? I, I don't care, I have a big red blob. And it's one of the key challenges for the, the housing sector is to get that engagement. The third and final phase with Aberdeen included fully quantified images where the local authority were able to knock on the door and say, here is a photograph of your house. You are wasting £347 per annum. That can buy you 450 cans of tenants lager at Tesco. And that, believe it or not, for Scottish people, <laughs> that worked beautifully. That got Scottish people saying, yes, please, please give me everything I can have for free. That rolled out for us. We, we recently did about 50,000 houses uh, throughout Scotland. Uh, and actually, we're able to say, look, you can now get ground source heat pumps under Eco. You can get uh, solid wall insulation. You can get EWI, IWI. There's a whole raft of measures you can get for free at the moment if you know where to look and how to get it. And that is what the rest of the presentation is about. Andrew, you online, sir? Hello, Andrew Eagles here. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. Sustainable Homes has been around since 1997. We've assessed over 100 landlords on their sustainability and helping them with the Green Deal, getting to low carbon. We train code for sustainable homes assessors and we've done a huge amount of work on fuel poverty and energy efficiency, cost of improvements. We represent about a million homes on government consultations. We wrote the guide to the Green Deal for the Homes and Communities Agency. And if that doesn't keep us all busy enough, we also provide training on Green Deal advisor, energy efficiency for asset managers and housing quality indicators. So just moving on to the next slide. The key area to focus on today is the energy company obligation. So, so the background to that, it's important to recognise is um, CERT and decent homes and all of that work means uh, most properties have had their double glazing done, they've had those easy lofts have been filled and cavities have been filled as well, those easy ones. And that's all the, the low having, hanging fruit and we all, we all love that, easy stuff to pick up. Uh, so now it's about the whole house approach and tackling hard to treat properties. This is something we focus on in our eco standable course that we're providing with uh, Rockwall. We talk about going to that next step on eco and how, how to achieve it. Really important, what is the energy company obligation? So this is an obligation on the large domestic energy suppliers to install energy efficiency measures that address energy consumption and fuel poverty. That's really key. It replaces CERT and CESP. Uh, now, although you will have heard this figure, 1.3 billion pounds a year bandied around, that's based on the total carbon reduction. So there's strong indicators that, that getting, achieving that carbon reduction is likely to lead to a spend of significantly more than 1.3 billion pounds a year and it may change over time, but the, the carbon reduction target doesn't change. So it can work alongside Green Deal Finance, um, but can also be done separately and independently. It started in January 2013, and the pace is really picking up now uh, as energy companies look at potential areas and housing associations start to gear up a bit more. That 1.3 billion pound or more uh, needs to be spent by March 2015, so we need to start lining up those pieces of work. 
One, one thing we like to emphasise is that although it's useful to have those homes improved, there's a real opportunity to uh, assist with training, skills and jobs in the regions and community pride and wellbeing. So for instance, we know uh, when Rockall look to do solid wall works that for every solid wall home, that's 17 days worth of work um, that can be uh, provided for potentially local people are helping to install that work. The finished house greatly improves community pride and wellbeing. We're really interested to help that whole picture for residents and housing associations. So we wanted to help people understand those different uh, areas of eco. So um, the largest area is the Carbon Emissions Reduction Obligations or CERO. This provides support for uh, fabric efficiency measures for hard to treat properties and it's valued at approximately £760 million per year. It's the majority of the obligation, about 60%. And different to assess and search, it's not restricted to particular areas. Um, so that's really, really useful to know. There's a bit more flexibility. The Carbon Saving Community Obligation, or Cisco, it provides fabric efficiency measures to low income communities, particularly those in rural areas and it's valued at £195 million per year, or 15% of the obligation. And those are the two areas we'll be focusing on in a bit more detail after this. But the third area to note is the Home Heating Cost Reduction Obligation, HHCRO. It's the next step on for affordable warmth. This provides insulation and heating packages to low income and vulnerable households, and it's valued at over £300 million per year. 25% of the obligation. And because that's open to um, the private sector and the public sector, there's less of a focus there for RSNOs. So let's focus on um, CERO, which is hard to treat properties. So the two areas of focus are solid wall properties. Now this is um, a significant opportunity. It's estimated there's 7 million properties in the UK um, that this could apply to. So you're talking about um, system builds, wimpy no fines, or any walls requiring EWI. It can be homes, medium rise, or high rise apartments. So where these are grouped together, it's a real opportunity to improve them. External or internal wall insulation. Of course, there's a preference for external because not as much disruption for, for residents. Then hard to treat cavity walls. So these are uh, cavity walls of three or more stories. Um, or narrow, narrow cavities or partially filled cavities, and it's estimated there's still 3 million properties in the UK that that can apply to. So there you have um, some, that's 10 million homes in total that, um, that you can focus on through these funding mechanisms, and a significant proportion of the total costs would be covered by that um, CRO. So once you have those elements, solid wall or uh, hard to treat, you can also add uh, secondary measures such as lofts, floors or draft proofing, district heating connections, infrastructure, um, but that's only on top of where you already have solid wall or hard to treat cavity insulation. So in terms of your total calculation, you'd find properties with those hard to treat or solid wall issues and you would um, add in these additional elements and look for the uh, total carbon savings from those elements and then get the total pool um, of funding that you could agree for this. Then you need to go to your board, gain the additional funding um, apart from grant that you need to complete the works. So it partially covers costs, um, landlord contribution is required, ECO is designed to make investment and fag improvement attractive but not nil cost. It suits integration with major capital works programs for social housing. Um, you can share uh, preliminaries uh, and you can minimise resident disruption during the works. The carbon saving community obligation, um, Cisco, this is area based and it targets people in the bottom 15% um, of the LSOAs, the most deprived areas in the UK. So it's both um, social and the private sectors and you can gain a list of which those where those LSOAs are um, from, uh, from DEC or CSE. 
you gain free insulation, um, loft, cavity and solid wall and glazing measures uh, and it can also fund district heating connections if the property is already meeting quite a high uh, thermal insulation standard. Um, so this will significantly benefit RSLs with focus because of that, um, that specific attention to the bottom 15%. Now, what do you need in order to gain that funding? We need either a Green Deal assessment, uh, so that requires access to the premises and the resident takes a couple of hours, generates that Green Deal advice report, which is all really helpful um, and it's just for a specific dwelling. Or you can do a chartered surveyor's report, uh, it must be a survey for the whole house and it can be done. Um, by a person who's appropriately qualified, um, such as a registered surveyor. You can cover more than one dwelling with this chartered surveyor's report and you don't need to visit the dwelling. So some people are looking at, at, at doing that instead. Uh, now separate to those, you carry out a lifetime carbon savings calculation um, that uses RDSAP as a base and then calculates on the lifetime carbon uh, expectation for the lifetime of the measure, sorry, and uh, then you can work out the, the cost per tonne from that. Now, the big change for ECO happened about six months ago was this consideration of in-use factors which reduces the uh, proposed carbon saving per measure uh, by about often 35%. So you do need to note those, and those are both in off-gem guidance which I can send people if they need that information. So. Uh, what are the key differences to the previous regime? So no specific areas are excluded, so there's um, less chance for pepper potting of, of that works. Um, private homeowners can be included using and incentivising them with uh, finance offers. Um, the utilities are working harder now to um, generate sites and complete the works and you know, there's some housing associations waiting, they're thinking, well, the cost per tonne is going to go up, the price per tonne is going to go up um, just at the end. We're not as likely, um, we don't think that's as likely. So, important to get on now and get involved. Far more rigorous guarantees are provided with product and install accreditation, and um, the detail does continue to evolve and develop, but those are, we feel those are positive changes. How do you get the most out of your eco plan? You develop a detailed verified stock analysis data as soon as possible, um, it's really, really important. Uh, we can do that for you using something called Chrome analysis, uh, so that can provide in-depth analysis of how to get your homes to low carbon the most cost effective way and the eco that you could take up. You consider partnership approaches rather than standard procurement, so energy providers are saying we want long term large scale strategic partnerships, uh, that sounds really positive for both sides. We prepare uh, your management team for the scale and timing of investment and you have to be willing and able to move quickly, so you need to know how much you can commit from your organisation. You need to maximise activities around hard to treat cavity wall insulation, um, particularly around three storeys and above, and uh, in conjunction with solid wall insulation. Look for large, larger continuous blocks, so medium rise and high rise, far more cost effective, more grant available. Consider commissioning your own chartered surveyor or eco reports, um, we, we can help with those, they might also like to do those in house and ensure eco seams are tied to long term whole house energy strategy. So rather than just saying we want eco funding, you know, consider that this may be one way to make part of your energy strategy for reducing fuel poverty for your residents. So just a few more slides now, here's an example uh, of uh, the funding mechanism using CESP, but the type of project could be taken ahead. Here it was a range of um, properties including terraces, semis, tenements, housing blocks and retail. Um, the residents have saved huge amounts on their fuel bills and less external noise. 
over 280,000 tonnes of CO2 has been saved and uh, it's undertaken by Rockhall up in, in Scotland, Glasgow, up where um, Stuart's neck of the woods. Um, I'm sure though that they don't have as lovely a tilt to their um, accent as, as he does. But here we see, what does Grace say? The energy saving measures dovetail perfectly with the association's major works program. This will secure a long-term future for these properties, providing dry, warm and energy efficient homes for residents while transforming the appearance of our community. So one thing we need to understand is that, uh, that there's a significant change coming up for our homes in the UK. It's going to be far higher unit energy costs for tenants. Private rented homes will be required to meet a minimum of EPC very shortly, 2016. Uh, there's a change in climate, hot and cold extremes. You need to start considering how you can make improvements to your home over the longer term. And the eco-funding opportunity means you can start thinking about retrofit right now. So, so eco applies to some of your homes, right? But why not think, well, let's look at all of our 5, 10, 20,000 homes and analyse where we want to get to. So you could use the Chrome assessment tool or, or you could have IRT come out and assess every single um, home to work out how to take that forward. The key is to identify the hard to treat properties and you can do that through desktop analysis. Identify the range of measures and options applicable to these properties. Undertake a physical survey to confirm applicability. So when we provide Chrome, um, that stock analysis identifies residents most at risk of fuel poverty. It looks at investments required to make those improvements. Uh, you can specifically analyse just low rated properties and improve those or look at divestment. Um, you can identify archetypes and the opportunity for eco-funding is one of the scenarios we can run. But it's important to note that that's really within a, a picture of where you want to go with your homes as a whole and that's something we're really interested um, to, to state is, a, is important. So as graphs here you can see the top blue one shows carbon analysis, cost per tonne um, according to each measure. The next shows each measure by the impact in reducing fuel poverty for residents and the last shows each measure and how that can uh, improve your SAP, uh, the SAP of your homes to improve your overall SAP performance. So we can analyse by each of those areas to give you an overall picture for your homes. So here's an example with uh, Amicus and Rockwall we went out did a site survey looking um, at 700 dwellings we identified the potential for loft insulation and draft proofing, we identified additional scale up opportunities and the likely carbon saving, engaged with the market to identify eco potential and outline the basic design options and additional high performance specific specification options. So then they had a little bit, a few more steps to go to to secure that uh, eco funding. So just, just to summarise on, on Chrome, uh, We've been told a number of times it's the best report and spreadsheet you'll ever have. Uh, provides that significant uh, in-depth analysis of measures and your homes and how they could get to low carbon, most cost-effective way. Uh, it's the archetype results. It provides analysis of training and apprenticeships and jobs potential coming out of that. Uh, and it's very, very close to the chartered surveys report required for ECO. Once you've done all that, you need to think about the top-up funding that you require uh, in addition to ECO to get your homes improved. So is there adequate budget available already? Where are you going to get that from? New funding, existing capital works budgets or development opportunities. Um, so you need to think about how you're going to get approval for the budgets. ECO isn't 100% funding. So it's important to consider all of that and also uh, OJU issues. Um, one thing to note uh, is that there is a new um, framework out there called the Green Services Hub that housing associations and others can join for free and all of the framework providers on that are OJU compliant. So that can do away with six months worth of 
uh, work to get your um, to get your eco work taken forward. So that's just that's just one suggestion. There are other frameworks where you can move forward and get that done without all of that OJU compliance um, issues. So just in, in summary, it's really important to get your stock data right. We often find people are going out to, to do eco, but they're not clear on the, um, the initial stock data. It can be improved significantly. Consider partnership approaches. Prepare your management team for the likely scale and timing of investment and be willing and able to move quickly and maximise activities around hard to treat cavity wall insulation and in conjunction with solid wall insulation. I hope that's been really useful. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, be involved. Really good um, taking us forward with IRT and uh, I hope to meet you all uh, either in person or, uh, or on another one of these through uh, cyberspace. Thanks a lot. Bye now. Thank you very much. Um, so that, that, that is pretty much it. We're trying to keep it as, as simple um, as possible, keep it nice and informal. Uh, across the UK, IRT have got uh, nine branches. Uh, we've got offices, three offices in, well, four in Scotland actually. We've got one in the north of Scotland, we've got one in Dundee, one in Edinburgh, one in Glasgow, one in Manchester, one in Liverpool, Birmingham, Bristol, and four down in the southeast of, of England based down in Essex. So if there is anything we can help you with, please, please, please get in touch. Um, again, if you want that uh, CPD certificate that goes along with this presentation, or you'd like to ask questions or, or get involved at a a deeper level, please do uh, fire information at us and we will do our level best to get in touch. Uh, if you'd like to talk direct to Andrew at Sustainable Homes, uh, please again either come directly through us uh, by clicking the, the, the links on our website or pick up Sustainable Homes online. All that remains is to thank you very much. I'm, I'm half, I hope I didn't bore you too much with my Scottish accent. I hope you understood me okay and uh, please feel free to phone me directly as well. Chaps, ladies, thank you very much for dialing in and I hope to talk to you again next time round. Thank you very much. Bye.